The traitors, perhaps used to fighting unsuspecting foes, stood no chance against the determined Lyrian attack. At its conclusion, Meave personally knocked Fulberson off his mount, then tore off his visor. The face she saw evoked more sympathy than hatred. Fulberson was an old, sickly man, his skin pale and blemished. With great difficulty, he pulled himself up on his knees, then extended a shaky hand in pleading. Your Grace, have mercy. The Nilfgaardians forced me to treason. They threatened torture. Me felt her soldier's eyes on her. They awaited her decision. How would she treat this traitor? Would she really execute him as a warning to others? I hereby dissolve your division, Falberson. And you? Surrender your sword and be on your way. The traitor threw himself at the Queen's feet. You've shown mercy befitting a truly great ruler, your grace. A thousand thanks. To the west of here lie my lands. Visit me. I shall throw a sumptuous feast in your honor and provide a generous donation to your fight against our common foe. Meave ordered Fulberson to stand. Her Lyrians reluctantly stepped out of the departing traitor's way. When he passed Black Rayla, she spat at his feet. Meave and her Lyrians arrived at Fulberson's lands, home of the traitor she had let live. He greeted the Queen with full honours, in ceremonial garb, a platter of bread and salt held aloft. Your Grace, tis an honour to welcome you to my humble abode. Please, come inside. A fattened piglet already turns on the spit. Soon, I shall fetch my best wines from the cellar. Meave, having lived on nothing but salt pork and gruel for weeks, was tempted to accept the offer. Black Rayla, however, was strongly against it. Ma'am, forgive my insolence, but to eat from a traitor's table is foolish. Don't do it. Meave ignored Rayla's warning, and for her part, Rayla refused to partake of the feast. The Queen attended in the company of only her closest advisers. The table groaned under all the refined delicacies laid out upon it, and rivers of wine were served. Fulberson delivered a flattering toast in Meave's honor. You could search all the world and not find such a ruler. One so brave, so merciful, and so naive. With these last words, heavily armed Nelfgaardian soldiers poured out of the adjoining rooms. Meave leapt away from the table, barely dodging the bolt sent flying towards her. She drew her sword. Not so mighty now, are you, me? You pay for this! <laughs> Falverson, slayer of the great beam. <laughs> Sounds rather good, doesn't it? Me, catch! I've no intention of dying today. You fight in vain. This is where you die. Discipline shall bring us victory. Wait, you're serious? Company! Forward march!
And just when you thought things were about to get dull. We must trust each other. Quick and painful this'll be. Her Majesty is... exceptional. Nothing personal, I assure you. Her Majesty knows what she's doing. Discipline shall bring us victory! fought her way out of the trap, and Fulberson, a traitor twice over, finally died as he deserved, skewered on a sword in a puddle of blood. Reynard. Yes, Your Grace. Should I appear ready to forgive again? To let treason go unpunished? The Queen said, wiping her blade on a lace-fringed tablecloth. Kindly remind me of Falberson's feast. Meave went on her way as soon as she could, taking with her a hefty load of the oath-breaking Lord's belongings and some valuable experience.